Hey guys, this is Aaron Carmen from AXE Electronic, back with the next video in our series of videos covering basic circuit analysis. So you can see today we're on lecture 10 and we're going to be talking about DC power. So up to this point, we've largely just talked about voltage and current, but there is another quantity that we uh, care about that we've mostly been ignoring up until this point. So that is going to be power. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about power in DC circuits. So one thing that I want you to remember is that voltage, I'll use the blue color for this, voltage is the amount of energy per charge. So if we have one coulomb of charge, how much energy does it take to move that charge? Okay. So how much energy does it take to move a charge? Okay. Now current is charge, so the amount of charge over time. So how much charge is moving for every second, for example. So now if we look, if we multiply these two, let me make sure I write the units. So the units here, energy is in joules and charge is in coulombs. Like I said, this one charges in coulombs and time is going to be in seconds. If we multiply these two, if we do V times I, okay, then that will give us joules per, or sorry, joules per coulomb times coulombs per second. You'll notice that the coulombs cancel out and that gives us joules per second. And this is a quantity called power, the amount of energy that we're expending each second. Okay, the amount of energy we're dissipating, storing, radiating, whatever it is, per second. So this is power. Now, if we rearrange this, we can see that P, let me, let me change colors, that way, since we're, we can see that P for power is equal to V times I. All right, so this is the equation for power. Now, power has units of watts, spelled like that, and one watt is equal to one joule per second. Okay? So if we say that we are dissipating one watt of power, that means that every second we are dissipating one joule of energy. Okay, so notice that we have P is equal to V times I, and we have, we have uh, Ohm's law. I'll go ahead and rewrite Ohm's law, which is V is equal to I times R. We can rearrange Ohm's law, so we can, underneath here, we can do I is equal to V divided by R, and we can substitute this into the equation for power. Okay, so let's do form one. So I'll do a one here. This will be the first form of the power equation. So this is the first variation of it. We know that power is equal to voltage times current. If we take this and plug it here into voltage, what we'll get, oops, sorry, what we'll get is I times R times I. So that's the same thing as I squared times R. Okay, so if we wanted to know the power dissipated by a resistor and we know the current and the resistance, then this formula will give us the power. Now we have a second form that's very similar to that. So we have P is equal to V times I. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to take this equation for current, plug it into the I, and then we get P is equal to V times V divided by R. You can see that is equal to V squared over R. So similarly, if we know the, if we know the voltage and the resistance of, across a resistor, then we can calculate its power using this equation. Okay? But all, all of these things, all of these different equations are all the same. So power is equal to V times I, that's the same thing as I squared times R, and that's the same thing as V squared over R. Okay, these are all the same equations, so you can use whichever one is easiest given the problem. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, you know, we're talking about power, but what is the what is the significance of it? So power is pretty important because a lot of components are only rated for power. So in real life, you know, let's say that you have a resistor. And say, you know, it's just a basic resistor, like from an electronics kit or anything like that. So this resistor more than likely is rated for one quarter watt, a quarter watt resistor. Now that's a pretty standard resistor size. Yours might be different, but you can see that it's rated not in terms of voltage or in terms of current, but in terms of power. Okay, so that means that we can only let it dissipate 0.25 watts before this component will start to fail. Okay, 
Now this is similar for a lot of other different components, but this is the, the simplest version of it. So then I also want to list off a couple of ways that power can be dissipated. So that, let, me, let me call this power, I'll, do, I'll call it power loss, okay, because we're losing power to these things. So we have to provide them power. Okay, so how can power be dissipated? Well, the most common way is through heat. Okay, and that's what a resistor does. A resistor, all the power that's dissipated in a resistor is going to be converted into heat. Okay, and that's why, if you notice, if you, uh, if you start cranking up the power through a resistor, it'll get really hot, right? And so it'll lose its, or it'll start changing its resistance due to the heat, but it's still going to dissipate that energy as heat. Okay, so that's the most common form of power loss. Another form of power loss is mechanical waves. So mechanical waves. So let's say that you have a speaker, right? And this speaker, you have to apply power to it, okay? And it's going to take that power and turn it into a mechanical wave. So it's going to be vibrating the sound wave. So let's say that we have you know, just a speaker like this. And what's going to happen is that whenever you put a voltage across it, okay, what's going to happen is that it's going to start vibrating the waves, or it's going to start vibrating the air, and that's going to travel outward. So that is power being dissipated as a mechanical wave. We're taking this energy and turning it into a mechanical wave that we call sound. Okay. So I'll change colors since we're going to do a different example. Another way that we can lose power is mechanical motion. So if you have, you know, just a simple electronics kit or maybe an Arduino kit, you might have a DC motor inside it and in it. So DC motor, I'll just do a little simple drawing here. Okay, and it might have two terminals across it. So this here is the motor shaft. And what happens, again, if you apply a voltage across this motor, this motor shaft is going to start turning. Okay. Now, in order to start turning that motor shaft, we have to put some energy into it. Okay. This is just basic physics. We have to put energy in order to create motion. So that energy is going to come from the power that is being lost to mechanical motion. Okay. So we're putting in power to create this mechanical motion. Another way power can be lost is through EM waves or electromagnetic waves. So before we talked about mechanical waves, EM waves, let's say that we have an antenna. Okay? And then we give it an alternating current, okay? Because antennas work with alternating current. What's going to happen is that that's also going to create a wave, except it's electromagnetic, so we can't see it, but we can pick it up by another antenna but it takes power in order to generate those electromagnetic waves. So we have to provide power to the antenna. So this is another way power can be dissipated. And then the last way that power can be dissipated is actually not dissipation at all. It can just be stored. So we can store a certain amount of energy inside, let's say for example, a capacitor. So if we charge up a capacitor, it's gonna store that energy in that capacitor for use later on. Okay. So this is just some examples of how we can lose power. That way you're not just thinking, oh, well, power is a useless quantity. No, power is very important, and it's an important metric for a lot of things in electrical engineering, and it's something that we care about and that it's really good to know. Okay, so let's do ourselves a simple example, just working on calculating power. Let's say we have a 10-volt supply, a 3-ohm resistor, and a 7-ohm resistor. Okay. So this one is pretty easy to analyze using the techniques we've seen before. So because this is pretty easy to analyze, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. So what we'll see is that there's one amp coming from that power supply into this circuit. And there's going to be, I'll put it down below this resistor, there's going to be 3 volts across this resistor and 7 volts across this resistor. So let's calculate the power. So let's do the power in the 3 ohm resistor. All right. So the power, remember, is voltage times current. The voltage across that resistor is 3 volts. Okay. The current through that resistor is 1 amp. Okay. So another, the last thing we need to know is that there is such a thing as positive and negative power. Okay. So positive power means that power is being dissipated. Negative power means that power is being supplied. So for example, things like a source would have a negative power. So we have to decide here whether it's going to be a positive or a negative power. And the way you can decide is this. 
Look in the direction of the current. So this current, remember, is going clockwise, and it's 1 amp. So this current is going into the positive terminal of this resistor. It's, the current is going in the positive terminal and out the negative terminal of this 3 ohm resistor. Okay? So since the current is going into the positive terminal, we're going to use a positive here. So 3 volts times 1 amp, that's going to give us 3 watts. Okay? So if this were a standard resistor, then it would probably fail or get really hot or something like that because standard resistors are rated for one quarter watt. So we can know that this resistor, the bare minimum, is going to get pretty hot. Let's do the same thing for this uh, 7 ohm resistor. So we'll follow a similar method, V times I. So this time the voltage across it is 7 volts. It has the same 1 amp of current. Now the last thing we needed to do is decide do we use a positive or a negative. So the way we can do that is we can once again say the current is going into the positive terminal or into the positive sign on that voltage drop. Okay, So we're experiencing voltage drop. It's going into the positive sign. So that means that we will put a positive here. So that means there's 7 watts of power being lost in this resistor. Okay? So if that 3 ohm resistor got hot, this one's going to get very hot okay? and have more of a chance of failing. All right, so now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the power of this source. So I'll do power of the source. We're going to use the same formula, V times I. This V is 10 volts because there's a 10 volt rise across the source, times 1 amp. Except this time, are we going to use a positive or a negative? Well, since our current is going into the negative, okay, and our voltage is rising, then that means that what we're going to do is we're going to put a negative here. So a negative. 10 volts times 1 amps gives us negative 10 watts. Okay, so let's let's look at this circuit for a second and, and see what we think about it. So you can see here that we have 10 watts total being lost. And then we have 10 watts being supplied. Okay, so instead we have this negative 10 watts, I'll call that 10 watts being supplied. So in physics, the conservation of energy means that energy can't just come from anywhere. Okay? It has to have a source. Okay? So we can't create or destroy energy. So that means we have this 10 watts being dissipated. That source better be supplying 10 watts okay? because it's going to have to come from somewhere. So if, if, for example, we did this problem and we got uh, that the source was only supplying 8 watts, okay, then we did something wrong okay? because then our numbers don't add up then we're just getting energy out of nowhere. So the power rule pretty much states that for every power or for every unit of power that's lost, that same power has to be supplied. And in this case, it's being supplied by the 10 volt supply. Okay? So now let's look at another example, just to make sure that we've got this down really nice. So let's do, let's see, we've got a 5 volt supply, plus and minus. And let's say we have a 10 ohm resistor and another 10 ohm resistor over here. Okay, so we've got these two resistors in parallel. Again, this is a pretty simple circuit, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time solving this. You'll see that we have 1 amp coming from the supply, then we have 0 0.5 amps going down this way, and 0 0.5 amps going this way. All right, so that means that the voltage across these resistors must be 5 volts. Alrighty, so now we have the voltage and current. Let's calculate the power for everything. So let's start off, I'll use the red color again for the resistor since this is power being lost. Let's start off with the 10 ohm resistor on the left. So the power is going to be V times I. So that's going to be, uh, it's going to be 5 volts times 0 0.5 amps. Now, are we going to use a plus or a minus here? Well, what you should be saying is, the current is going into the positive terminal, or the current is going in the direction of the voltage drop, so therefore it must be positive. And that will give us 2.5 watts. Okay, so that's the power for the left resistor. Let's do the power for the right resistor. It's a very similar process. It's actually extremely similar because of the configuration of the circuit. 5 volts times 0 0.5 amps, and once again, the current is going in the direction of the voltage drop, or it's going into the positive sign on this voltage, so then we'll do positive. So once again, 2.5 watts. 
So each of these resistors is dissipating 2.5 watts. Now the last thing, we need to look at the power that's being supplied by the source. Okay? So I'm going to use the green for the source. I'll do P source. And that's going to be the same V times I. So that's going to be 5 volts times the source has 1 amp going through it. So we're going to use 1 amp here. Now before we can calculate this, we have to say, is this a positive power or a negative power? So once again, the direction of the current is going in the negative or into the negative terminal of this source. Okay, so the direction of current is going in the direction of a voltage rise. Okay, so since the current is going in the direction of a voltage rise, that means that we are supplying power. So we're going to use a negative sign. You can see that we have negative 5 watts or 5 watts being supplied. Okay. So last thing, let's just check and make sure our power rule makes sense. So we have 5 watts being supplied and 2.5 plus 2.5 watts being dissipated. 2.5 times 2 gives you 5, so we have 5 watts supplied, 5 watts dissipated. Power rule is satisfied. So power rule, it's a big check mark. We satisfied it. Okay. So like I said, power is a, is a little bit of a, an abstract concept right now, but it, further on, uh, you'll understand that power is an, ex an extremely important quantity in a lot of fields of electrical engineering, and it's something that we're going to need to know. So we can apply it to these very basic circuits now to make sure that we're doing the correct things, and we can also use it to calculate, let's see, if, you know, if we're going to accidentally blow up a resistor, or if we can use a certain component given the power rating that we need. So that's all I have for you for this video. Next time we're going to start talking about capacitors and how we're going to handle them in DC circuits. I'm going to start off with a little bit more of an intuitive explanation of capacitors and then we'll start doing some circuit analysis once we feel good about capacitors intuitively. Uh, so if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you like this video please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more of this content. Otherwise I'm Aaron Carmen and thank you for watching.